Cody came out for a promo. Place just goes nuts, chanting his name. We want Cody. Rocky sucks. And he essentially thanks the fans. They're the people that got him into this match. And they show clips of the Rock appearance on McAfee's show where he brought up the Cody crybaby line and Cole tells McAfee, it was all your fault. (laughs) And so then Cody says, I know promos are different now, but uh, what am I supposed to do with those nuggets? And Pat's at the table and he's on the spot. He doesn't know what to say. And so he just mutters, shove them up your ass. So Cody says, I'm a fan of The Rock. We all have been at some point. Everybody boos. He goes, The Rock doesn't listen. I never insulted his ancestors. Rock and Roman is the perfect storm. But Rock, you put your hands on me. You slap me across the face. That means I'm going to hit you back. And the crowd pops big for that. And then Seth's music hits. And he came out and he cut a great promo. And he essentially said that I knew Roman a decade ago. You know, we came through the crowd together, and I, I'm i basically somewhat responsible for who he is now. But I did not expect it to end up the way it is. And he said, what's your plan for Mania? Last year, you got screwed out of the title. Usos there, Paul there, Solo there. You couldn't get the job done. You fought your way back, won the Rumble again. Heyman's still there. Solo's still there. Jimmy's still there. And now you've got Roman and The Rock. He says, you do not have to fight this battle alone. May not see eye to eye, but I told Roman, or you told Roman, that you didn't just want to take his title, you want to take everything. And in my soul, I felt that. And so basically, he said, if you're fighting the bloodline, I'll fight alongside you. And so it sure seems like a tag match to me. Yeah, I think so. Sure seems like a tag match to me. Yeah. For night one. Night one. This is not Australia. Just no, no, we no. Can no, reiterate no. that for the fiftieth time. No, they were never going. Hey, listen, the Australia show starts at five a.m. Eastern. Okay, Dwayne is not returning to wrestling to wrestle on a show that airs at five a.m. Eastern. It not happening. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't know if I say it fifty times and people keep thinking that he is, but whatever. And we had uh, Jey Uso. Espe- especially when every single bit of um, publicity is for him at WrestleMania. Yes, that is correct. So uh, Jey Uso talked about uh, facing Gunther next week. Then we had Liv Morgan, Zoe Stark, Elimination Chamber Qualifier. These two had a rough time following Cody and Seth. And uh, just not a lot of heat. And then Zoe missed the Phoenix Splash. Is Lib at the Codebreaker Oblivion? She is going to the Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Judgment Day is walking around backstage, and Truth is telling JD he's not really part of Judgment Day. And finally, Priest snaps. And he says, Truth, this joke is over. You are not part of Judgment Day. You've never been a part of Judgment Day. I've been clear about that. The beatings were beatings, they were not initiation. Tonight, I just want to make it clear it is an execution. And Truth is very sad. So JD comes out for the match, and Truth is in the back, and he's desperately trying to get a hold of Miz, wants him to get to the building ASAP from L.A., and Pierce is screaming at him, the match is right now, get out there, and he shoves him through the curtain. So they do the match, and they gave Truth a lot. Did the full John Cena comeback, five-knuckle shuffle, and finally he goes for the axe kick. JD avoids it, hits the exploder, gets the pin. And so Judgment Day is going after him afterwards. But uh, he makes his own comeback. He clears the ring. But then he's face-to-face with Priest. Priest punches him out. They swarm him. And then DIY runs down to make the save. So I guess we got some six-man matches coming up. Um, Isn't it uh, an eight-man? Miz? Oh, yeah, Gargano, Miz too, yeah. Miz, eight Gargano, Ciampa, and R-Truth against all four members of Judge Balor, Priest, Dominic, and JD. Yep. Yep. Cody meets with Sammy and says, Sammy, you're not the only one who believes in you. I believe in you. The people do as well. Give me a handshake. And Sammy says, don't give me that. And he pulls him in for a big hug and gets ready for his match. Becky came out and did a promo. She basically talked about all of the highlights of her career, including meeting her husband, having a baby, low lights, including missing her father's funeral, having to explain to her daughter why her father wanted to fight Maui. <laughs> That was a good line. That was a good line. Said she was obsessed with winning the title back. She was going to win the chamber. She was going to face Rhea Ripley. And then out comes Nia Jax. And I don't know what the hell was going on here. Nia's acting like she's crying. 
Yeah. Talking about what a great mother Becky is. If she could only be such a great mother. Well, the, the idea was that she, she was supposed to go out there and and be a baby face and then turn heel at the end of the promo. The, the, the but problem, nobody bought it. Nobody bought it. They're booing her out of the building. They think she's totally full of shit. Nobody And then bought it. after she started, she just cries. And then finally she goes, nothing is going to stop me from beating Rhea. And at WrestleMania, it's going to be you versus me. It wasn't even like she did a big turn. I was like, so you were actually crying about what a great mother Becky was or what? Because that's, that's, that's her role model. If she ever had a kid, she wanted to be a mother like Becky. This segment, this part of it sucked. Becky's promo was great. And then Rhea came out and we got a three-way brawl. And Rhea told Naya, you're going to have to kill me to beat me in Australia. Yeah, she didn't beat her in Australia. I think that's that's highly unlikely. I actually don't think it's impossible. I don't think it's impossible. I think it's a bad idea. It would be a terrible, horrible idea. I think but it's I think it's a bad idea. You know, Nia did beat Becky clean and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Becky yeah, never got her win back. Yeah. And I can see Becky, you know, going to uh WrestleMania challenging Nia to play off the broken nose, getting beaten and never getting revenge. I can see them doing that. I think it would be a terrible idea to beat Rhea in Australia. I hope they don't do it. But I do not rule it out. Yeah. The thing is, though, is Rhea is so much bigger of a star. And it's you don't say. Yeah. Than Nia yes. Jax. So she that's is. why I think that I think that's why I think that she's she's winning. Plus, you don't want to beat you don't want to beat Rhea Ripley in in Australia. That, I mean that that's the main event on the show. I mean I don't know if they go in last, but that's the real main event in that in for that city. We had a Drew promo. He's always just giving fans everything they want. He says, Cody, get yourself out of this match with me next week because you should avoid being in my prayers and avoid facing me one-on-one -on -one, or you might not make it to Mania. We had LA Knight and Ivar in a qualifying match. Good for what it was. Ivar, of course, we've talked about underutilized. Fun match. LA hit the slam. Elbow drop. Ivar kicked out. Went for his doom salt. LA moved. BFT pinned him. LA Knight is in the chamber. Mm-hmm. Sammy met with Drew backstage, and Drew told him to keep his name out of his mouth, nose out of his business. We had a segment where they announced a last chance battle royal next week for the women's chamber. Maybe they'll do that for the men, and now Bronson will get in there. That possible? It's possible. Now, okay, so the thing is here, I'm wondering how this is going to jump, because originally in the women's chamber, the last person in was going to be Jade Cargill. So... It's possible she's in the battle royal and she wins it, but if, but if it's supposed to be a last chance battle royal, yeah, she didn't get a first chance. Yeah, but did Chelsea Green get a first chance? I guess maybe not. Yeah, she's going to be in. So if 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 Jade Carr goes in, she'll probably win. But if not, um, that means that they got cold feet on her, and I don't know which which it'll be. And then the main event was Nakamura and Sami Zayn, and it was good, but they there was like not a lot of heat early. There wasn't a lot of heat until about 13 and a half minutes in. Well, the reason is it wasn't a chamber qualifier. There were no ramifications regarding Elimination Chamber or WrestleMania. It was just a match. Yeah. And they did the match, and it's good. It's Sami and Nakamura. And then finally, Sami goes for the kick. Drew runs down, distracts Sami. Nakamura with the chop lock, Kinshasa, and pins him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and Drew and Nakamura are double teaming him. Cody makes the save. So I guess you can do a uh, tag match there as well, but next week well, it they're is. Doing, they're doing a singles match with Cody. Drew and, and Cody, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is interesting, that. by the way. That's an interesting one. Why? Well, gonna... well, you certainly don't want to beat Cody. No. And I would not be beating Drew right now. So they're DQ finish. I guess they can do that, yeah. yeah. Why didn't um, I think of that? Yeah, so Cody and Drew, Gunther and Jay, uh, the eight-man tag with Miz and his friends against uh, JD, and the last chance battle royal for the women. That's next week's show. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.